An outspoken trends analyst and expert Gerald Salente says investors can no longer ignore the biggest trend out there, Bitcoin. But is it headed to 10,000, 50,000 as some are suggesting, or is it the biggest bubble ever? Gerald, good to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. So obviously we're becoming more and more of a digital society here, as you point out. So does that mean it's inevitable our currency is also heading that way? Is Bitcoin the currency of the future? It's, it's all the cryptocurrencies, maybe Bitcoin or, or whatever else, the, all the other ones coming on. You see what's going on, Danielle, is that people have lost faith in the fiat currencies. You had Jamie Dimon, of course, you know, from JP Morgan Chase calling Bitcoin one of the biggest frauds. Well, you know, how about those six banks that were major banks that were convicted of fraud? So I guess frauds know of fraud, but it's not that at all. What it is is that they're afraid that Bitcoin is going to take away their business and they're trying to kill it. Right. There's no two questions, two ways about it. And what's very important to look at is what's going on in China. China has just put on restrictions, so by the end of this month, it's going to be very difficult for people to deal with Bitcoin. Why? Because the yuan has been growing very rapidly. And when the yuan was declining over a year ago very rapidly, it was the Chinese that drove up the price of Bitcoin because their, de their yuan was being devalued. Here's the point that I'm making. You look at Chinese exports, they're way down. There's fear that S&P just downgraded their credit rating last week. You're going to see a devaluation of the yuan so they could, de so they could increase exports. And now the people won't have Bitcoin to go into. So on a whole nother level, where are they going to go? They may go into gold. And on the broader level, it's the same thing in every nation. They're all going, so many are going cashless, as India did. Right. And, and so what people have lost there, there's no in God we trust to hold up anymore. There's nothing to attach yourself to. And people realize the fiat money scam. So we see Bitcoin having a long future All right, so, and other cryptocurrencies. So, Joe, I'm assuming you did well with Bitcoin, that you got in at a, at a good level. I never bought it. <laughs> really, from the way you gold. speak, I would think that you've had such success with Bitcoin. No, no, I don't own any of it. All right. You, well, know, let's... you know, again, I'm a trend forecaster. I, 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 I don't give financial advice. There's the downside to it, too. You know, I have investment money. I invest in different things. I rather invest in a tangible. So I invest in gold. Right. And, and, so, on, and on that topic, Gerald, uh, you know, many would argue that Bitcoin has stolen a lot of thunder from gold. And that's why we're not seeing gold rallying more here. It's very true. Again, you know, people are in a sophisticated. It's very easy to buy Bitcoin. And again, it's a digital world. I mean, you go to China, I mean, it's your smartphone app, man, and you're paying for everything. Right. So that's very simple like that. But as I mentioned, now with governments, and that's the biggest, down, uh, the, the biggest downside of cryptocurrencies, governments could change it like that, just like they did in China. So where are people going to put their money as their currency is being devalued? And it goes back to the gold standard. And, and that's why we believe that while Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are going to have a place in the future, as we, we see it, still the bottom line is gold is the tangible that nothing replaces at this time. And what do you think in terms of forecasts for, for Bitcoin? You know, I've, I've never seen anything polarize investors so much. So, you know, some either love it or either love to hate it. Some are calling for $40,000 Bitcoin while others are expecting it to fizzle away, saying it's the biggest bubble ever. So where does Gerald stand on the spectrum? We don't believe it's going to go away. We don't know the price, but the price shot up too quickly as we see it. You know, again, it, it, people forget it really grew when the yuan was declining. And now it's only about 15% of Chinese. And it's very important, too, the banksters are going to continue to talk it down because it makes banking obsolete. Mm -hmm. 
and the banksters obsolete. So they're going to do everything they can to stop it. And when you, and again, you, you listen to the words of Jamie Dimon and he brags that it's central banks that give, give fiat currencies, uh, uh, excuse me, that give, yeah, get fiat currencies their standard. Central banks, a bunch of private banks. You know what? What current? What currency is that? So there's going to continue to be a fight between the banksters. And by the way, what Bitcoin all also represents is the populist movements that are springing up throughout the world. People don't want to be attached to crooked governments and central banks. All right, Gerald, let's wrap with your forecast for gold now. I know you're obviously a big advocate of the yellow metal. Where is it headed for you right now? Well, again, it's our same forecast, Daniela, we've been saying now for about two years. Gold has to break strongly above 1400 for it to gain more strength. And when it does, and I'm talking 1460, 1480, 1450, 1470, we see it skyrocketing to 2000 but it has to break above that point and again of course there's now there's concern about rising interest rates but interest rates really aren't rising that much when you put in for inflation over the last 10 years and how few times they raised interest rates they are still near zero when you really put it into it so it's not going to have that much an effect on it and again it also weighs on the dollar so and the dollar again is is losing strength what is it down about seven percent this year oh and by the way the yuan's up over six percent so just to show you what's going on so we don't see strength in the dollar and so we see a positive future for gold so last question you say positive future for gold uh were your hopes dashed though because you know we saw gold uh, finally make it through the 1300 mark to only come back down last week. Uh, so what's the hope they're looking for 1400 now? Well, again, you know, it's going to take time. And, and by the way, also important, uh, we don't believe when there's a geopolitical crisis and people jump into it that that's sustainable. And unless, of course, it's a world war, you know, and then you, know, you could kiss your gold goodbye anyway. But the, the, so, again, short term, we're in the range that we are now. All right. And when panic breaks out again because of the bubbles that are going to burst, whether it's in China with their debt to GDP ratio at 300, or the central banks trying to figure out how to unwind this $16 trillion worth of debt just in six central banks that they have to unwind, you're going to start seeing a lot of problems arise. So when those kind of problems start really sparking up again, that's when we see gold moving up. Right now we see it in the range that it is. All right, Gerald, I always appreciate the enthusiasm. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Daniela. And thanks for watching this edition of Kickles Gold Report. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching.